Welcome, folks, to our first look at the Avengers Infinity Campaign Box character and action cards. We got a first-hand look at this, thanks to a preview copy, from our friends over at WizKids Games. This game will release on August 1st, 2018. This is going to be a first for Dice Masters. I shouldn't say first. There is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle set that did the same thing, but a first in that moving forward from now on, the game moves from a collectible card game format to a more of a living card game format where you're going to get everything you need in a box, all the cards, all the dice, and you can buy team packs to add in and supplement the teams you have. But we want to look at first what we're getting out of this Avengers Infinity campaign box. So let's start with Arnim Zola. We have three character cards for him here. You can see there are two, two, and three cost bolt characters. He's got a fielding cost of 0 one, one. And we look at his abilities. When fielded, you may KO target sidekick character die. If you do, Arnim Zola gets plus one, plus one. So you get a one chance to buff him up upwards of a 3-3-4 three, three, and a 4-5-5 five, five defense. His middle card there, Scientist Supreme, when he would be KO'd, you may pay one generic energy to clear all damage from him and return him to the field zone at level one. And this does not trigger any win KO effect. So, similar to what we had in Alfred, Back in the Batman set, except it does not trigger a win KO'd effect. And finally, when he is blocked, you may have one generic energy to remove him from combat before combat damage is dealt. So it allows you to pull him out of the fray and not have him be damaged. So that's our first villain. Let's see who we've got next in the set. Next, we've got the Avengers Infinity... I'm sorry, the Avengers ID card. Uh, this is a action die that has a two cost across the board it is a shield i'm sorry a mask energy and we have all of them sharing the global pay a mass target character dying reserve pool or field zone gains avenger until end of turn so important to note that you can give that avenger affiliation while a die is in your reserve pool along with the field zone so the first one avenger dice costs one less purchase and are free to field your Avenger characters get plus two, plus two, and finally draw three dice. Roll any Avenger character dice you draw and place them in your reserve pool. Place the rest in your used pile. So this allows you to manipulate the Avenger um, affiliation, and, and also each of these are going to allow you to prep a die from your bag if you're rolling on the burst or double burst side. So this allows you to have some fun with the different Avengers affiliations, make them a little cheaper, buffing them up, Rolling and throwing them in the reserve pool. Some great fun to be had with the Avengers. Next up, Black Panther. We have a return to the Black Panther character who we have not seen since the uncanny X-Men days. Black Panther is a 5-cost Fist character with the Avenger affiliation. He's a 4-2-5-2-8-2 on his level 3 face. First off, he cannot be blocked by villain characters or sidekick characters. Secondly, it's plus 1, plus 1 for each active opposing villain. And finally, if he is KO'd, KO target opposing villain character die. There are some nasty villains out there, especially that wander into control. That final one could be a great way to take care of a blob or a shriek, those vibranium daggers. Personally here, I really like the Orphan King. Cannot be blocked by villain characters or sidekick character dice. Get him out. There's a lot of villain love in the game. That could be a big punch at 4, 5, or 8 damage across the board. Next up, we have... A rarely seen character in the Dice Master lore. I kid, of course. Black Widow. She's a two-cost fist. Avenger affiliation. When Black Widow attacks, if an opponent controls a higher level character die, deal that opponent one damage. When fielded, you may KO target sidekick character die. Or finally, when fielded, your other character die, you have plus one attack until end of turn. She has the global on all three character cards once per turn. Target character die must attack this turn if able. Um, I love the global. I love that we have Taunt coming back with a fist. Um, being able to pull something across the board really puts a stop to those strong control meta cards that just like to sit out there and wait for something to happen. Uh, of these dice, I really like the first one. When she attacks, if an opponent controls a higher level character die, deal the opponent one damage. So it allows you to get in and, and possibly do a little old school Serena damage and just get that little one punch to your opponent if they have a high, higher level in their field. Next up, folks, we have Captain America. Cap is a 
Oops, uh-oh. Got, got a little ahead of myself there. Cap is a 4-4 four, four, four or 5 cost shield energies Avengers affiliation. While Cap is active, when a sidekick character die you control is KO'd, prep a die from your bag. If it is not a sidekick die, Cap gets plus 1, plus 1. While Cap is active, when you use an action, you may feel a sidekick from your used pile. And finally, when Captain America is active, your sidekick character dice get plus 2 defense. There's a lot of fun with sidekicks to be had in the game currently. Um, all these do some different things. You let your sidekick stay out there a little longer at the five cost. Uh, both of the four costs let you, when a sidekick character die you control is KO'd or allow you to bring a sidekick in. When you use an action, I really like the Stars and Stripes Forever. Being able to field a sidekick from your used pile can be fun to use, especially something like a Jubilee that's going to um, bring in some extra damage when a sidekick die is fielded. Next up, if you saw just a second ago, is the good Doctor Strange. Doc Strange, again, coming in as one of the more expensive cards. Um, he is a seven cost across the board. He has a tune on two of his character cost, or two of his character um, cards, and a tune is one damage to target character or um, target character or opponent when you use an action die. The first one, when Doctor Strange is active, your action dice cost one less to purchase. Two when fielded, when you use an action die this turn, you may re-roll the action die and place it in your prep if it rolls an action die. And finally, when Doctor Strange is active, when an action die is used, you may use a copy of its effect. You may choose new targets for the copy. Um, all kind of fun. The attune damage is great, and they all tie in with action abilities, but uh, I kind of like the use a copy of its effect one. That can be you, or when an opponent uses an action die, you can use a copy of its effect. That is a fun one to use, and um, if you're gonna go if you're gonna go expensive on Doctor Strange and spend seven on him, um, I think that one might be the one to go with. Let's see what we got next. Dormammu. Dormammu returns. Who was in a team pack a while back here? Dormammu is a villain. He's a six, six or seven cost villain. He um. Let me get these back in focus here for you, folks. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, while Dormammu is active, at the end of each player's turn, KO the character die with, with the lowest character die with the lowest purchase cost controlled by the active player. Psychic character dice are considered a purchase cost of zero. So, two, while Dormammu is active, character dice cost one more to field, and global abilities cost one more to use. And finally, when he's active, non villain character dice cost your opponents one more to purchase. Um, I kind of like the increase of purchase, goes back to the uh, days of. Um, using Oracle on the cheap characters to make them cost a little more to purchase. But the middle one where character dice cost one more to field and globals cost one more to use, that's an across the board, and that's going to affect you as much as it does your opponent. So I either like the last one, Call Upon the Shadowy Shapes, or possibly that From Here to Eternity, if you're not planning to utilize a lot of heavy cost characters or global abilities and you want to get Dormammu out there to do some damage with his villainous attacks of 5-5, five, 7-6, five, and 8-8. Eight, eight also like to note that each of these character cards and action cards do note that they have a max four and in the campaign box you get exactly three dice for each of these character dice and action cards next up is gamora gamora is a four cost fist character she is a guardians of the galaxy sorry about that i'm losing my focus here Gamora is a four cost fist with the Guardians affiliation. She has Deadly on her first one to KO all character dice engaged with her, and she can only be blocked by two or more character dice. Secondly, she cannot be blocked by lower level character dice, and on her single burst, which is level one, she cannot be blocked by level one character dice. And finally, uh, her last one, Black Vortex, when fielded, if you control a non Gamora Guardian character die, KO target level one character die couple fun things each of these uh, especially that last one's going to require another guardian to hopefully be in the set that you can use I like the deadly and can only be blocked by two or more character dice uh, lets you not only limit the amount of block potential for her because your opponent needs to have two or more character dice to block with her but all those character dice are going to be KO'd at the end regardless of their defense so Gamora could be a fun one especially if you want to get some clear with that next up we have the Hulk, 
six, five, six, and seven costs. He is when Hulk blocks or is blocked by a non-villain character die. He gets negative three attack. Middle one, seven costs. When fielded, KO all opposing level one character dice. And finally, the six cost is an intimidate. When he's fielded, you remove a target of character die from the opposing side until the end of the turn. And then you return that at the conclusion of your turn. Um, they're not bad. Uh, they're not great. <laughs> the um, the Hulk that has the five cost to him has a great stat line for a five cost. But being blocked or blocked by a non-villain character, getting a negative three attack is going to be rough. That puts him at a one, three, five attack level. So... Um, I think I'm gonna go with the middle one if I do any of them, and at that seven cost, boy, that's a that's a rough play. So Hulk might <clears throat> might not get the the play he so desires out in the out on the field here. Next up after Hulk, we have the Iron Man. This is a five cost shield character. When Iron Man is KO'd, oh, I'm sorry, we got the focus thing going again here when Iron Man is KO'd you will gain two life Iron Man cannot be targeted by opposing global abilities or action dice and finally while Iron Man is active the first time each turn an Iron Man character dies targeted by global ability or action gain one life a uh, little bit of life gain in there I don't mind the KO'd gain two life one uh, not being targeted by opposing global abilities or action dice is nice but right now I think I'd have to go with Anthony Stark and take the gain two life Especially in a game where life can be a resource that lets you pull in a couple extras. Next up is everyone's favorite villain, Loki. Five cost, five cost, six cost mask. He comes in with a 151728 stat line. The middle Loki gives you a tune. So use an action die, deal damage to player or character. The one on the left, when fielded, choose an affiliation other than villain. Replace all previous choices. Your opponent can pay two life to prevent it. While he's active, ignore the text on all cards of that affiliation. To let him shut something down that isn't a villain. Avengers, Guardians, you name it. <clears throat> the Father of Mayhem over on the far right, the six cost Loki, says when fielded, select target non-Loki character that you control and target opposing character and swap control of them. At the end of the turn, return the opposing character dice, if active, and your opponent returns your character dice, if active. And those that leave the field go immediately into their owner's prep area. So six cost Loki lets you flip a couple guys. I give you my sidekick. I take your Hulk. And that's, uh, well, that's not really a swap you want to have. So I like the six cost. He's a little more expensive than the fives. But getting that swap for something that you have and something that I can give you very easily. Boy, that's a great exchange there for Loki. Next up, we have the Red Skull. Red Skull making an appearance back in the game. Uh, we last saw him. There we go. That's been a few cents since we last saw him. Uh, four costs, four costs, five costs. Uh, four costs on the left when opposing character dies KO'd. Red Skull gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Middle one when he's active when opposing character dies KO'd. The controller either loses a life or you gain a life. And finally, if an opposing character dies KO'd this turn, Red Skull may be fielded for free. At a 1, 2, 3 fielding cost, that's not too bad. Uh, I like all three of these. I like that they are effectively happening when your opponent has a character die who is KO'd, which lets you pick apart their field. And there's a couple different ways to do that in this game. And there's a benefit for Red Skull in all those cases. I've got to go with the Red Skull that gets the plus one, plus one when opposing character dice are KO'd because that guy at a three, four, five attack could get really beefy if you're finding ways to potentially KO and wipe out your opponent's field. Next up, we have Star-Lord, another Guardians of the Galaxy-affiliated card. He is a four-cost Fist character. Uh, first one, when Star-Lord is active, when a non-Star-Lord Guardian character die attacks, prep a die from your bag. For each die that attacks. Middle one, if you control a non-Star-Lord Guardian die, prevent all damage to Star-Lord. And finally, attune. When you use that action, he allows you to damage a player or character. All of them being four costs. If I'm using the Gamora, I've got to use the left or the middle one here. Um, if not, honestly, the, the human hybrid one here with the attune at four costs, that's not too bad. He's a 1-2-2. Two, two. He's got some beefy stats at 3-2-5-3-5-4. Two, 
So he's a consideration, especially if you're going to use Gamora or use some of the other excellent Guardians of the Galaxy cards that we've had in the Guardians release that came out not too long ago. Next up, another character we don't see quite enough of is Thor. Thor the Avenger, six cost bow across the board. He is a character with one globe on one of his cards. The globe on the far left is payable once per turn. The next action die you purchase this turn costs two generic energy less, minimum of one. This allows you to get that red dragon discount without having to um, take the damage, or I'm sorry, without being able to deal the damage. That character in particular, that Thor gives you a tune. The middle one, when fielded, deal X damage to target character die, where X is the number of bolts in your reserve pool. And finally, when fielded, deal one damage to every character die in the field zone. Prep a die from your bag for each character die KO'd by this effect. I like that last one, doing the one damage to every character in the field. Each character die is KO'd, and so that includes yours. That includes your opponent's, allows you to prep. Uh, that can potentially build up that red skull that we were just talking about. So you can kind of have some fun shenanigans with how you KO and what characters can benefit from that KO. Next up is Vision. Vision is an Avenger. He is a four cost, four cost, five cost mask. The five cost says Vision can block two character dice. The middle one, when Vision blocks a fist or bolt character die, deal one damage to target opponent. And finally, Vision cannot be targeted by global abilities or action dice. He's a 0, 1, 2 fielding cost, which kind of puts him all over the place as a 1, 4, 2, 6, 4, 7. Um, I do like the 5 cost. Blocking two character dice is crucial, especially in a game where you need to have those bodies out there to block over crushing characters, to block a, a onslaught of big attacks coming at you. The 5 cost can do some work with that absolutely um i think that's got to be my favorite of the visions and finally janet van dyne herself the wasp she is a two cost three cost three cost bolt on the far left she has amplify when you use an action spin her up a level her middle one has a tune which we've addressed with what that is, but when you use a tune on her or another card, this wasp gets a plus one, plus one. It really kind of reflects back, I think, a little bit to a wasp we saw back in the day off of the Age of Ultron characters where if you use global, she bumped up. This one with your attune or on the right combination of other attune cards could really get strong and fast and aggressive quickly. And finally, the last three cost bolt loss, love and loss. While wasp was active, when an opponent uses an action die, deal one damage to that opponent. Uh, there's a lot of action die use going on in the meta currently. So I really like the two three cost wasp uh, flitting about and love and loss, both of which having some potential, one being aggressive, one being more to stop what your opponent's trying to do in the meta when it comes to action dice use and abuse. So that's what we have for the characters. What do you like? What do you not like? What stands out to you? What are you most excited to get to the table? I want to give you one bonus thing here. I was going to do this on a separate one, but I think I'm just going to throw them all in now. Let's take a look at the basic action cards. First off, we have Big Entrance. It's a very familiar card when it comes to Dice Master basic actions. Uh, wording has been changed to Impulse, but basically you're buying this, put it in your bag, and if it rolls character or energy face, um, it's energy. If it rolls action face, you're buying dice with one less of their printed cost and putting it right into your bag. Blam, blam, blam. Deal X damage to all opposing characters where X is the lowest defense among all active character dice. If no opposing character dice are KO'd by this effect, prep this die. This triple blam will allow you to possibly get a bunch of KOs, which could benefit if we remember that red skull that just gets all sorts of beefy when stuff like that happens. Confront the Mighty. Target character die you control has attack equal to the defensive target opposing character die, and then those two deal damage to each other equal to their attack. So I've got a 1-1 one, one sidekick. You've got a 1-8 um, blob that's just messed up my field. My sidekick now has a 8 attack because it's equal to the defense of your die, and my 8-1 sidekick goes up against your 1-8 blob, and they basically just do what's happening in that picture that looks all so familiar um, from the artwork is one we've seen in the past and, and possibly one of my favorite cards looking at that giant man so allows you to really target and take down something on the other side of the field 
Crowd fighting, choose an active character die, deal damage equal to that character's die level to all opposing character dice. So one, two, or three damage to all character dice on the opposing side. I want you, continuous, at the beginning of your opponent's turn, choose an energy type. All character dice of that energy type must attack this turn and deal no combat damage. If any of those dice are unblocked, they remain in the field instead of going to the use pile. At the end of your opponent's attack step, send this die to your use pile. So it allows you to call out what you want to see come out, possibly block and KO some things from your opponent's side based on energy type. And that is a continuous die, so you can use that when it benefits you the most. Raise Shield, some artwork we've seen in the promo cards in the past. Two target character dice you control get plus one, plus one. With the burst or double burst, they also gain overcrush. And if you pay a bolt, target character die gets plus one attack. I like that. I, I don't like that it's chancy that you overcrush, but having that global is great. Squad goals, draw and roll a die for each different energy type among your active character dice. Sidekick Stone of Energy and they go in the reserve pool. I love the idea of using this with spot. I have four different energy types. I'm gonna draw and roll eight dice with this. Love it, love it. I can't wait to have fun with it. Take cover, character dice you control get plus two defense. One more will get plus three defense. And then you got the shield global, which is a great global, especially when it comes to competitive drafts to be able to um, you know, save some guys and, and keep some defense out there on the board. Next up, under surveillance, target character die is considered to be level 1 and is unblockable until end of turn. This is a return to the Specter Ops card uh, that we've had quite a few sets back. Paying 2 mass, you can also spin a target character die down 1 level. And finally, Wormhole. Whenever you could use a global ability, you may send this die to your use pile. If you do, return all dice controlled by a player other than their owner to their owner's field zone and return all dice temporarily in the field zone to where they originally came from. Looking at Loki and the shenanigans he can call cause, if you have this out in the field, it's going to prevent your opponent from flipping your characters and kind of put them back where they need to be. It also would stop any temporarily fielded dice and send them back to where they came from so that is wormhole that is a look at all of our basic actions in this new avengers infinity set so what do you like what do you not like what are you most excited about do let us know there's a lot of fun to be having these again as a reminder you're getting two sets of sidekick dice action dice for the basic action cards you're getting three each of the character and action dice that we saw, each one with a max four total, and uh, a really nice storage box back to the days of what we had with the deluxe storage. This is the new campaign box setup, and there is going to be room then for expansion, adding in some of the team packs. And we'll be looking at those team packs again, um, or we'll be looking at those team packs for the first time here not too soon from now. So enjoy, take a look. Thanks again to our friends at WizKids, and uh, we'll be seeing you later. For more information also on these cards and be able to see some written reviews and releases as they come, make sure you check out our site over at www.gamingwithsidekicks.com where you can find some of your up-to-date Dice Master news along with board games, tabletop games, and a variety of card games. We are looking at the games we like with the people we love. So until next time, folks, have fun rolling those dice.